For Admirals forward Mark Van Gilder, faith is an important aspect of his life on and off the ice. I think I decided at some point in my life, maybe after juniors or in college, that I'm not just going to say I'm Catholic and then just kind of, you know, go through the motions or just pick and choose what I feel like doing. I, you know, I kind of decided if this is what I'm going to say I'm, I am, this is what I'm going to have my, you know, my decisions, my actions reflect. So I, I don't really like the whole like, in-your-face kind of thing. I think everyone's raised differently. Everyone has different backgrounds, beliefs. I don't want to be that that guy. But at the same time, I'm I'm proud of my faith, and I th I think just like you see a great movie, you don't just keep it to yourself. You want to tell all your friends about it. Like, hey, check this out. Like, this is awesome. I'm th I'm not afraid of of sharing it, and I think it's important that kids in the area, you know, I've been going to some Catholic schools. I think it's important for them to hear, you know, it's all right to live this way. Um, you don't have to be ashamed of it, you don't have to be afraid of it. I think it's important coming from someone that's maybe not their teacher or their parents. The great thing I learned is, especially being a Catholic, there's nothing more attractive, there's nothing um, more appealing than living a true Catholic life. And you don't need to say a word, you just do what you do, make good decisions, and people will see that, people will respect it. One guy who was actually roommates with on the road, he actually asked me to bring him to confession for, he wanted to go confession. I don't know what he did, but <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty cool. I was pretty happy about that, He felt that he felt comfortable asking me. Do I have an awesome house? <laughs> um, I have a house, I bought a house in Minnesota last year. It's average. <laughs> One, two, three. After Mass, it's a short drive down Wisconsin Avenue to the Children's Hospital campus for the team's annual visit. Probably everyone's favorite event, favorite thing we do, probably by far. And I kind of wish we could, we could get out there more. I know um, those kids are you know, dealing with a lot and they're sick, so we probably just can't show up every day. We love doing it and it, they're so, it's so much fun. Like, we have, there's kids that are dealing with it. We, had a kid with Crohn's disease, a kid who just had heart surgery, a little girl just had you know, heart surgery, had a tube put in in the morning and she's smiling, she's you know, laughing, she's having a great time, they're coloring with us. We're so spoiled and we have such a great life, we're so blessed with the ability to play this great game, to get paid for it, which is ridiculous. And then, you know, sometimes you can take it for granted. And when you go do stuff like that, see kids that are, that are struggling every day with their health and, you know, not sure. You know, if they're going to be able to play sports ever, even go to school, that really, um, really gets to you. I think we learn a lot from those kids, and, and I think they have a good time too. Each year, the Admirals team up with Prevent Blindness of Wisconsin and host a charity fundraising event. One of the items auctioned off is a dinner expertly planned and prepared by the Admirals' Mark Van Gilder. Last year, Charlie Larson approached me and Ben Ryan and asked us, would you guys be interested in, you know, doing a dinner, like auctioning off, like you guys making dinner for someone? And we had a great time, it was awesome. We put together a meal and it raised a lot of money for uh, the prevent uh, blindness. So we did it again this year and we had, what, two or three months to prepare. <laughs> Obviously I waited until the day before to figure out what we were making. So I just, you know, shot a text to uh, Fordo and, and Joe and uh, we went head over to the Metro Market we weren't very organized, we just thought we'd zip around and just kind of grab things as we went. I don't know, the head chef was just kind of letting it be a free-for-all, I think, you know. Gave us, gave us the recipes and said, told us uh, sous chefs to get out there and get, us, get stuff for them. All right, Fordo, you do this, Joe, you do this, and Scott's like, all right, I'll get desserts, I'll get meat, you guys get cheese, crackers, and appetizers, so. Uh, we were a little bit of in a hurry, so we kind of didn't have too much time to screw around. This is what you do, you come to the supermarket and you just eat lunch. I don't know. It looks like a little slice of heaven to me. Right here, this is what I'll be picking up. You can't cheat this, like this is unbelievable. But uh, we'll come back here, we gotta go grease the meat guy first. I'm gonna get three pounds of the fresh Atlantic, please. Sure. 
That's why you go to the butcher. And you get from the butcher and, and, and you ask and you shall receive. Would you put just unleaded gas in a Ferrari, right? You got to, uh, you got to put the premium in so the body works the best. Look at this. Yeah, we've got, uh, got some prizes in here. <laughs> I told him to put extra tape on it so I couldn't get into it until time for dinner. Made one full lap, only took close to 50 minutes, and we got, uh, we only forgot a couple of things. We'll get together tomorrow before the dinner and try to make sure we got everything and get everything prepped. So we'll see how, see how it goes. It's 4.30, and the dinner team has exactly one hour to prep for the meal ahead. After the children's hospital visit, we end up going back to Fordo's place just to get everything ready to go, just so we weren't eating dinner at 8.30, 9 o'clock like we did the previous year. So got, you know, chicken ready, got hummus ready, got uh, everything ready to go for salmon tacos. I think getting everything done close to the same time, usually when I'm making food for myself, I have trouble doing that, but making food for 13 people, I think, I don't know, maybe might be a bit of a challenge. We'll have salmon tacos done at one time, chicken done at another time, potatoes done at another time, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> what, we're just a sous chef. We're just hanging out, getting, basically getting bossed around is what's happening. As you can tell, I'm, I'm peeling the potatoes here, and they're over there talking. <laughs> superfood. But we're gonna mix this nice superfood with <laughs> ranch dressing, so super food and super tasty after that. I didn't have anything better to do really, so here I am. Creamy, ranchy goodness right here. <laughs> Got a lot of work done, so I think we're ready. We'll find out. By 5.30, the boys are on the road heading north to Mequon for the big night. Upon arriving at the winning bidder's residence, kitchen attire is distributed and the dinner team gets to work. We had uh, Liambus again this year. Him and Sisons were on, on coconut crust chicken. We're gonna have one with eggs, one's got flour, and one's gonna have coconut, shredded coconut, and, uh, and eventually piece it together one by one. Tasty. Joe was helping out with appetizers. He made the salmon rub that we had on there. He made the, the dip that we had with avocados and, and ranch dressing. Salmon rub for uh, Mark Van Gilder salmon tacos right here. <laughs> and really, I just had Fordo just for social reasons, you know, show up, grab a drink, and entertain everyone, like, you know. But he did that and he did a lot more. <laughs> he was kind of doing everything. Look, the guys are ripping on me like I don't do anything, right? What did I tell you earlier? The ambitious menu requires some creative use of cooking surfaces, but not all things go as planned. This girl's moving like I do when I wake up in the morning. It's slow. It's a little cold right now. We might have a pro propane issue too. Gonna go find the boss man here. And we might just be staying inside because I'm freezing my you know what off. Everything went pretty smoothly, I would say, for the most part. Like we had maybe one one hiccup was uh, we had the coconut crusted chicken in the oven and we had one a little bit, we'll call it well done, uh, and one that was perfect. So we ended up just stacking them. We just put the the well done, you know, the, the blackened chicken on the bottom and the nice looking chicken over the top. So it worked out. Food is great. It was good. It was fantastic. Yes. Either it was good or they were being really nice. So it was fantastic. I'll take it either way. Great dinner, lots of fun, super group of guys. Not only do we have a great time doing it, like we had a blast tonight, you know, meet some people, have a good time, but also raising money for a great cause. So I'll do this any year, any year I can. So 